Batman Returns is 25 years old. That marks quite the milestone for the Tim Burton movie. It's now of the age where it can rent a car. And in the quarter century since its inception, the movie's weird legacy has only grown. Originally dismissed by many during its release for strange Burton-y choices, the film's reputation has nonetheless endured. And over time, its 90s affections have bled away and what remains is a timeless, uncompromising art film in superhero drag. When you get right down to it, Batman Returns is a definitive anti-Christmas movie and the darkest superhero movie of all. While there might be more violent superhero movies since it came out, and even grimmer Batman tales about the heroes we need and the ones we deserve, Batman Returns doesn't have any heroes. Not really. These characters are broken toys masquerading as humans during Christmas time in hell. The self-pitying pessimism is overwhelming. Considering it also had Happy Meal tie-ins with McDonald's, this becomes all the more bizarre. Now you can get a Batman car and a McDonald's Happy Meal. The appeal here comes first from the fact that Warner Brothers wanted to make a sequel to 1989's Batman. And by all accounts, Burton didn't seem to want to make a Batman movie at all. He rejected a script by the first film, Sam Hamm, and brought on Heather's scribe, Daniel Waters, to add a dose of pitch black cynicism to the proceedings. The result is a psychosexual gothic fairy tale heavily infused by German Expressionism. Ignoring a traditional three-act structure, Batman Returns acts like a physical manifestation of its protagonist's psyche, as well as a condemnation of the culture that turned Batman into a merchandising icon. It moves its story from the heights of summertime Batmania in 1989 to the most capitalist happy time of the year, Christmas. But the film's own self-described Santa Claus is the picture's coldest heart. Max Schreck, with a name straight out of the Nosferatu casting call, is arguably the film's true protagonist. He also happens to be one of the three antagonists. This comes with the territory when you get someone as kooky as Christopher Walken on board. A fellow blue blood like Bruce Wayne, Shrek is the shadowy figure who pushes what little plot there is into the sewer. He doesn't wear a costume, just a suit, which is why he is the most monstrous of all. By contrast, the Penguin is an actual freak and is played with twisted pathos by Danny DeVito. In Stan Winston's makeup, DeVito has a garish disposition. Carry them into the sewer and toss them into a deep, dark, watery grave! But he is a monster who simply wants acceptance. He is the dark side of Bruce Wayne's soul that craves the shadows. And as the movie suggests, perhaps Bruce would be much the same if he wasn't robbed of his wealth to hide his vices. <laughs> Just jealous because I'm a genuine freak and you have to wear a mask. You might be right. But the strongest element is, of course, Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman. While probably the farthest from the comics of all the on screen Selena Kyles to date, Pfeiffer makes the role her own as an avenging feminist anti hero stuck in the urban world's version of Stepford. She has a job, but only a secretary who is mocked by her boss and then killed by him at night. Until death, she was trapped in society's girlish expectations, living a boring but safe life surrounded by pink stuffed animals. When she is resurrected as a woman, only then does Batman take interest in her, and only then can she take vengeance on an abusive patriarchy. How about a kiss, Santa Claus? She's an expressionist ideal writ large, with a tortured psychology informed by the state of her costume. As it deteriorates, so does her sanity but she still has the wits to know the audience expects a happy ending. Yet if Batman gets the girl, it would be its own kind of hell. To give in to Bruce would be allowing a man to once more make her decisions, domesticating her for her own ends. Forever just like in a fairy tale. I just couldn't live with myself. No, Selina, it's not just a fairy tale. It's a tragedy of operatic proportions. Catwoman loses her soul like Bruce did by murdering Shrek. Penguin dies with no one to mourn his miserable life save for his pets, and Bruce Wayne ends up on Christmas Eve alone, realizing that there is very little good in the world, and there is no heroism to be found in it. Told with a startling art direction unique from even the 89 film, Batman Returns is the closest superhero movies have ever come to an art house production, one that is unforgiving and unconcerned about plot or pacing, and more crowd-pleasing ones too. But to have this standalone melodrama so removed from franchise, sequel, or even basic audience demands 
is a Christmas miracle.